After last night, a lot of us have been left thinking, what the heck just happened? Including Tim Zhu. But just what's going through your mind? Uh, what the fuck just happened? In a Tim Zhu! Like, what did I get hit with? But still a lovely leg! Some saying it was attributed to arrogance. I thought Tim was a little bit arrogant. In a Tim Zhu! Some blamed it on underestimation. I simply think they underestimated what was in front of them. But it's not oh, I got dropped with that left hook! It's damn! I'm sorry. Me personally, I think it was a combination of both. In a oh. from so I share a similar sentiment, but in my personal opinion, I think we need to relax on the arrogant talk, which I will get into on this video. If I tell you I'm good, probably you will say I'm boasting. But if I tell you I'm no good, you know one line. <laughs> Yo, what's good, boxing talk family? It's your boy, Dr. PG and GM. Praise God to get money back for another YouTube video. Banger, man. Yes, sir. Yes, man. I don't know what time it is. The doctor's in the house, man. So check this out. You know, <laughs> what happened last night was was crazy, you know. I, I just wasn't expecting this, you know. And, um, you know, a lot of people are saying that, you know, Bakram Murtazaliev was underestimated and people think that, oh, he wasn't good because you don't know him. Well, you know me, I take a different approach because, hey, I'm familiar with all the champions. I make it my duty to do my due diligence and be very meticulous and thorough. This is what I do, right? I know all the champions from minimum weight, Oscar Colazzo, to heavyweight and Daniel Dubois. You know, with me being more familiar with some and less familiar with others, obviously. And Bakram Murtazalia falls in the ladder, you know. I'm familiar with him, but I'm less familiar with him, you know. I saw him fight Jack Colke, his last fight, in which he uh, won the IBF title as a vacant title, and he beat him by stoppage, right? Uh, I think 11th round, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. And I saw another one of his fights where he fought uh, Fernando Carcamo, and it was a one-round destruction, you know, first-round destruction. So I couldn't really gather much there. But a lot of his other fights um, are pretty hard to come by, you know. And um, I've seen some of his highlights against, you know, Kiari Gray and stuff like that. But my point is that I was, he's one of the fighters that I'm less one of the champions that I'm less familiar with but I knew going into this fight that it was going to be a tough difficult fight between him and Tim Zhu or at least I thought <laughs> so going into the fight I predicted that it would be a, 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 a long fight I thought it was gonna be a unanimous decision to where Tim Zhu would win you know I want to say easily but decisively, you know, in a, in a nice competitive fight in the early rounds, but Tim Zhu would, would, would eventually wear him down, not completely stop him, but do enough to get a convincing decision. And boy, was I wrong. Like, <laughs> I was super wrong. I did not see this coming. I, 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 like I said, I knew Bakro had a chance. I thought I was going to go to the decision. I didn't think he was going to get blown out the water, but I definitely didn't think he was going to blow Tim Zhu out the water. That was crazy, man. And I think, you know, like I showed in those clips earlier, that a lot of people are saying that Tim Zhu was arrogant and they underestimated him. And I do think that when you underestimate somebody, which I do think Tim Zhu did, and you overlook somebody because he was talking about, you know, potentially fighting Jermel Charlo, Errol Spence, Terrence Crawford, and some of the other champions, rematch with Fandora, it seemed like he was looking past him. And in order to do that, you do have to have a smidge of arrogance, you know, even if it's unintentional. But I want to say this, though, too, man. Because Tim Zhu was talking, he was talking heavy now. He called Bakram Murtazali of everything from a, from, a, from a step aside fighter. Hey, well, he's, he's a step aside fighter, clearly. To somebody that he's going to stop brutally and all this stuff, including his father, you know, which they had a little mini reunion. Kasha Zhu say that he thought that it was going to be a, a, a slow, steady demolition of Bakram, you know, on behalf of his son, Tim Zhu. And that just wasn't the case. But I will say this, though, man. Just because somebody is being interviewed and asked questions and he's talking about something, that doesn't necessarily equate to arrogance, you know? And being quiet doesn't equate to humility all the time, nor does being loquacious or talkative mean that you're arrogant. Now, you can have uh, uh, um, some, some inklings and some hints of that in there somewhere, but you could be talkative and humble. Like, those things aren't polar opposites you know <laughs> they, they usually don't go together i admit but they're not polar opposites and it's just so funny because on one hand we say when when, when fighters are quiet and they don't talk we say that they're not marketable what? they're not promotable what? they're not interesting what? they're not captivating what? they're not polarizing what? they don't have a they don't have any charisma what? right but then when they do talk then we say oh you need to be humbled yeah. it's, like, it's like bro just shut up and just chill let these fighters do what they do they they're fighters you should be confident. Now, there is a fine line between confidence and cocky, you know, but at the same time, 
if you put in the work, you should come forth with some type of confidence and your demeanor should be that one of, I can't be stopped. I'm a warrior, especially when you're a pugilist, you know what I'm saying? So I do appreciate the confidence and I do think we need to relax on the arrogant talk, but I understand how Tim Zhu could be seen like that. However, you know, I'm sure he puts in the work. He talks like he does. Everybody around him from, from the information that I gathered has demonstrated or, you know, according to the testimony, their testimony demonstrates that he, he's, he's a workaholic, you know, so and, and he's a former champion, you know, and, and, and for a lot of us, a boxing, the, according to the boxing landscape, the general consensus, a lot of us believe that if it wasn't for the cut that he sustained in the second round against Sebastian Fandora, that he would still be a champion right now. You know, the outcome would have been slightly different, but there's no way to say that for sure. But I just want to paint you all a picture that Tim Zhu was undefeated before this fight and sorry he wasn't undefeated he was essentially undefeated in a lot of people's eyes because he was a lot of people think he was handicapped due to that cut that he that he suffered on his head you know that it impaired his vision and uh drained his energy you know due to his excessive loss of blood so if you if you come from that perspective you can understand why he would be uh, uh extremely confident going into this fight against a relatively unknown fighter in bakran mertazalia he was just mistaken and i think that we need to you know, it's it's okay to be wrong, man. Like, it, it's all right. You know, Bertrand Zali, if he proved that he's a beast, you know, he's a tall fighter, rangy fighter, and he has some power. And that's why I thought that it would be a close fight. I just did not think that it was going to be a destruction, you know. But I do also want to make sure that we don't overlook in our surprise and in and, 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 and our um in our shock that Brock Robert he handled his business, man. That's what the focus should be. It shouldn't be on, oh, Tim Zhu was was uh, underestimated him. He had lingering thoughts or PTSD from his from the cut that he suffered against Sebastian Fedora. It shouldn't be that he was a uh, 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 arrogant or anything like that. The focus should be even despite that. Bakram Murtazaliev came in and he proved everybody wrong and upset the numbers because Tim Zhu was a heavy favorite. I believe he was negative 700 or something crazy like that. So Bakram was a champion. Oh, does that remind you of somebody? Yeah. IBF champion, underestimated, underdog, not treated like he was the guy to beat, but the guy just to get beat up. What you getting at with the book script? Spit that shit out, man. Oh yeah, Daniel Dubois was also the IBF champion when he destroyed Anthony Joshua, another fight that we called accurately. You know what I'm saying? We called that one out the gate. As soon as it was as soon as it was finalized, we said, hey man, Daniel Dubois is gonna win. If you rock with this channel, you know, you know. So I think that when we look at these champions, man, just whether we know them or not, whether they're young or not, whether we think that they were incapable of becoming a champion or earning their renown, we have to respect these guys for becoming a champion because that's definitely hard work to do. And not every champion is is is, is equal, but man, Every champion has earned it, in my personal opinion. So, Bakram Murtazali is another one, man. I look forward to seeing more of him. You know, I, he just made the 154 division that was already stacked and 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 kind of unpredictable. He even made he just shook it up even more. So. I, I'm looking forward to seeing the potential man with uh, Bakram Murtazali of getting the winner of Errol Spence and Fedora if that fight ever happens or potentially fighting uh, Terrence Crawford, you know, um, and have a unification match up there as well. Or if Jermel Charlo comes out of sabbatical, you know, champion in recess, that will shake it up even more, man. So I think Bakram Murtazali have just proved that, hey, man, upsets happen in boxing once again because people tend to forget that, you know, that it's it's any at any time anything can happen man but i also want to go back to tim zoo i don't want to forget this either it's just funny because i was watching some interviews a while back it just it just remind me of this man i remember when they were talking about michael Zarafa and he was being interviewed and tim zoo was uh discussing that potential fight again and he was like oh no that ship is sailed i'm not fighting michael Zarafa for what like that'd be me going backwards what about you and mom Zarafa? is that ship sailed? oh that's cool man forget the name <laughs> What did he say? Hey. Oh. Yeah, ship sailed. It hasn't sailed. You know what I mean? You need me. I'm your dance partner. You know, with, with, with me, you sell tickets. Well, I'll tell you who we could use right now. Michael Zarafa. <laughs> so that is just funny how, you know, things could change at, at a whim. And just one night, things could change. Now Michael Zarafa versus Tim Zoo looks very interesting. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I say it from day one. You know, he looks like his daddy, falls like his mom. So we'll see how it goes, man. But big salute to Bakram Murtazaliev. Hopefully Tim Zoo could bounce back. You know, I think I think he actually can. You know, I think it's, um, that, that's, that's the shout out to my boy Oscar, who's in the channel, man. You know, he pointed out something that I agree with wholeheartedly. Um, he said that, you know, we already acknowledge the depth of, one, of, of 154. That division is stacked, right? 
And one of the benefits of it being a stacked division is that you are just one or two wins away from title contention or being right back in the mix. And 154 is a hot division. You got Virgil Ortiz, the young bull, Charles Conwell. You got uh, Brian Mendoza, who was, who was a tough cookie. You know, you got Serhi Boachuk, Israel Madrimov, Terrence Bud Crawford, pound for pound, number one. You got, uh, uh, you're looking for the resurgence of Errol Spence, potentially. You got Jamel Charlo, potentially coming back off of his sabbatical hiatus. You know, you have, uh, there's so many guys, you know. So Tim Zoo, if Tim Zoo could beat Jesus Ramos or Erickson Lubin, he'll be right back in the mix, man. I'm not gonna name everybody, but those are a lot of people I just named right off the top of my head. So if Tim Zoo could beat one or two of those guys, he's right back in the mix. Now, you know, this is this does look a little scary because on paper this is his second loss of the row. In reality, it is his second loss of the row. So it'll be a little difficult. But, you know, he's a beneficiary of being in a stacked division. And, you know, he has that he has that um, that energy and that warrior spirit to be like, hey, I'll fight anybody at any time. And if he's really like that, then he can bounce back pretty quickly, man. So I look forward to seeing uh, more of Tim Zhu. It's not over with him yet. You know what I'm saying? Australia, my Aussie brethren and sister, keep your head up. You know what I'm talking about? But he did seemingly get exposed last night and Bakram he was not playing man and Bakram he, he looked brilliant last night three round demolition <laughs> bro I ordered food man I ordered food I ordered me a wing plate with fries and a chicken sandwich I didn't even eat one wing <laughs> it was over <laughs> So at least I got some food for tonight. I'll be I'll be eating for lunch. You know what I'm talking about? But yeah, man, I appreciate y'all rocking with me as always, man. Let me know what y'all think about that in the comments. Who are you excited for? What do you think's the next move for Tim Zoo? What do you would like what would you like to see for Bakram next? And yeah, man, remember with God we could we can do anything. Without God, we are nothing. The doctor's out. Peace. Don't forget to like the video as well. Before I get mad. From the hood to college, both worlds they had to meet Six degrees between us, so cold we're about to freeze But we're Florida boys, hot takes, we bring the heat We're moving the culture, the engineers to the streets